What's up Dapper Squad, it's your boy Darius, back at it again with some more Kuroko no Basket. Today we're doing episodes 63 and 64. We're gonna get some Taiko backstory. You guys have expressed your hypeness and interest, same as mine. I'm very, very excited. Very excited for after this to get obviously into the final match. And then I'm assuming that's gonna take us all throughout the end. And then we got the movie. Like we're, it really does feel like we're on the final stretch of Kuroko no Basket. I did see that this is a new opening for this episode so i'm very excited to watch it i did look up all the openings we have another opening after this one and another ending after this ending as well so there's a total of seven openings which is interesting once i'm done with the next one i'm gonna do a all kuroko no basket openings reaction so look out for that other than that don't forget to leave a like subscribe click that bell all the typical jazz check out that patreon if you guys want early access and full length all that jazz Let's hop right on into it. Kuroko no Basket. The first episode is called Blue Sky because he was talking about the sky was exceptionally blue on that day that he joined Taiko, right? Taiko, middle school. Oh, this is just crazy even being here again. This feels like episode one when they have their <laughs> ways you're joining a club. You know, when we first met Kagami Kuroko. Trust me, I've seen Haikyuu. The volleyball team would love you, Murasaki Baro. Isn't that guy really hot? Of course, it's Kisei, the model. Interesting. So he comes from a very well-off family, it seems. You already joined a club. I'm on the basketball team, of course. Let's work hard to get in the game so we can play against each other. That's his old boy. Because they had, they had that promise to each other. They were going to join basketball teams, go against each other, make it an official rivalry. Oh, wow, he made it. Oh, yeah, he made it to third string. Yeah. Which, I mean, hey, you know. First string. They say no one ever makes it first string out of this test. Aomine Daiki. Midorima Shintaro. Ooh, 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 ooh. These are the boys. Kisei's not one of them yet. Look at those fucking legends. That was his first moment. Re oh, these guys are built different. The music in Kuroko always hits. It's crazy to think Kuroko started third string. And how much he shines now. Hold on, I want, I want to make sure I read these. The other day I got my uniform. Ah, he puts the exclamation. He's all having, he's, ah, oh, I love their friendship, you know. I'm still riding the bench during games, but I work harder so I can become a starter. I love that optimism. How are you doing? Taiko's really strong, but as long as you work hard, I know you succeed. They're still writing letters to each other. Those, that's good friends right there, man. Gotta work hard and gotta get that extra practice. Only way you'll stand out, you know. I feel like, you know, feels like Deku when he's like, you guys already have 10 steps ahead of me. I'm gonna have to work extra hard to surpass y'all. So they won nationals. He's a vice captain as a first year. Mm, the phantom sixth man. <laughs> this is when they met because he thought Kuroko was a ghost. Yep. Oh, how does this feel like a throwback? You guys remember when I watched this mistimed? I, was... I remember, man. It feels like so long ago. God damn. This dude, Almine, man, he's the GOAT. <laughs> Hell yeah. You love guys with simple ideals like that that stick with it. But your rank has fallen even though he's working harder? He's not even good. Wow. It's pretty much useless to keep going. I'm not going to make you quit, but just know you're you're not good enough. You'll never... Oh, yeah. That must be so heartbreaking. I'm going to make a weird reference that only some of you guys are going to get, but I, I got such sports anime vibes from it. I was watching the League of Legends World finals international finals the other day skt or t1 versus drx which the story of drx and their underdogness and coming back 
making that as a fourth seed to even winning that whole thing. That's that should be a fucking TV show in and of itself. But Caria, who was the in my opinion MVP on T1, was amazing as support. It was his first time making it to Worlds, and they barely lost in the game five, uh, best of five. So it was three two. They barely lost, and he broke down so much and was like bawling at the computer and it was it, it literally felt heartbreaking to me like it felt like i was watching hisei cry or midorima cry or kasamatsu like it literally gave me that vibe which is like i don't know man i've never i've never experienced that irl immediately after watching something like that i don't i and it makes me think of that i don't know why i feel the need to tell you guys this but like i don't know i just Anyone who's that passionate about the thing they invest their time into, I, I always respect them on a whole new level. Now, if that's not a bar, I don't know what is. I can't guarantee you'll make it if you don't give up, but if you give up, that's guaranteeing you're not going to make it. He's like, oh, I didn't even notice you, blue-haired kid. Hello, who are you? More sucky bar eating Pocky. Hey, share one. I love Pocky. What are you going to give him the aptitude test? What's this music playing? He is, that's his niche. He's experienced, but you can't sense him. That was the beginning of his presence disappearing information, you know? Akashi was the first one to find that. That's crazy. The presenceless Kuroko. He's like, I gave you the first step, buddy. You got to find the rest on your own. Find me when you have your answer. Okay, Akashi setting the dominoes in motion. Wow. I mean, I get what he's saying, but that was a little, like, blunt. I don't know. Misdirection techniques. Okay. This man's trying to get his knowledge up, get some studying done. It's kind of like Akashi said. The thread was dangled in front of him. Now he just needs to climb that rope. Three months. Wow. Then let's test you immediately. What are we going to do? A little pickup? A little practice match? That's him. That's the guy I've been telling you about. Yup. They're like, whoa. He's just sneaking past us behind everyone. Talk about the ultimate assist. The ultimate support. That's a good sign. He had some sort of expectations for Kuroko's potential, but even Kuroko surpassed him. Immediate to the first string. Let's go. Even though I knew he's fucking on the first string, it still feels hype to hear him say that after how much fucking shit he was getting a little bit ago. Is there a Kuroko here? Oh, shit. I didn't even see you. Oh, my God. It's like a whole new fucking world. This is a whole new level, Kuroko. Yes. Feel that pressure. <laughs> I love it. A hundred battles, a hundred victories. <laughs> the amount of nerves and the pressure. First time starting first string against or were you, when your team just won nationals. Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. He's like, we'll start slow. Not that slow. I'm assuming Nijimura is the second year, third year compared to our first years right now. Their captain, whereas Akashi's vice captain, yeah. Makes sense. Good to see him in action. Ooh. Who you feeling like, Nijimura? Ooh. Mmm. This is more like a test match, I see. Yeah, we want Kuroko in as fast as possible. Ooh, oh, okay. L slightly off. Slightly off. It's all good. We're testing. Oh, 
確かに面白いがミスが多すぎる緊張感まだスタイルが自分のものになっていないのかその両方か急に投げないでください Kashi noticed something. Anytime you hear this sound playing in the background, it's Akashi's brain fucking working. They're demoting Tetsu. I see. Mm -hmm. He's putting his own rep on the line for his bud? Kaomine is such a legend. Oh. That's like equivalent of Giyu and Urukadaki putting their life on the line for Nezuko and Demon Slayer. <laughs> yeah, out with a cold, huh? Yep. That's what it is. A timing issue. Okay, is that why he's a little more stoic, emotionless in the future? But keep it hidden. Because he most definitely has one of the craziest wills to fight we've seen. But he's so good at keeping his emotions like that. Like that. Man could be like, I just murdered your family, Kuroko. He'd be like, oh, that sucks. Hey, Minorimo was not expecting that. <laughs> the way they don't even show Kuroko, half, like he's off screen half the time he's passing this. I love that. He is so much better in this game than he was last game. He just needed a little bit of words of advice from Akashi. He's officially on the team. There was still a test period, but he's officially made it. And now I just want him to write a letter back to his boy. Is that what he's doing? He's texting him, calling him? You got to reply back immediately? Okay. From Ogiwara. I'm not sure if the letters had his name. I'm going to write his name down right now. Ogiwara, congratulations. I knew you could do it. See you at this summer's nationals. It's a promise. That was the first episode of the Takeo backstory. I love it. I love it. Okay, on to episode 64. Momui giving us our new uniform. You know he's ecstatic. He's souped. Someone's joining the first string. Does he have yellow hair? Yes, he does. He's like, what? It took me three months just to get tested for first string. The captain? So Nijimura is quitting? This episode is called Sorry? That's not a good sign. That's rough. Want to spend time with your family before who knows what happens? Yeah. Yeah? You never forgive yourself. In that situation, so I understand. So this is how Akashi became captain. That pass, the way they animated a blink and it's at you. So this is probably when Akashi's gonna tell Haizaki to quit, maybe? Mm -hmm. Akashi saying, no, no, no! Ooh, that I actually kind of agree with. The potential for Kisei is insane. Yeah, he's making moves as a captain now. Yeah, Midorima's a little shook, just like I am. It's the charm. He can throw the charm on. Is that what they mean when they say there's two Akashis? And I love how Midorima is not only the one who told Kagami there's two Akashis, which, you know, is like, Kuroko will tell you more, don't worry. But of the relationships between the GOM, Aomine and Kuroko have their friendship that's like outside of the basketball. Out, I mean, it's because of basketball, but outside the team. And then I love how Midorima and Akashi are always together. They're always playing Shoji, Shogi. They're always walking together, doing what... They're always having these, like, in-depth discussions. And I love how they have this relationship that Midorima gets to see a side 
of Akashi that most people don't. But if that's the case, which is the true Akashi? Now, if that's not the damn question of the day right there, Midorima. So, is this been like the general manager, or who's who is this guy if he's not the coach? Oh, old man, Shirogane, you must be related to a certain president in Kaguya-sama. Mmm, just a natural observer. Really? <laughs> I don't know if I like the sound of that. Player squabbles happen. This is something for the captain to, to <laughs> deal with. Mm. Talk about a way to get them calmed down immediately. <laughs> now we have them fighting. But at least Murasaki Bara and Midorima aren't. <laughs> like, we, we see what it's like. Bros do fight, you know, they realize how crazy they are afterwards. Shouts out, shouts out them. With no more Hayzaki, we got Kisei on the side now. I like that little addition. 50th point, oh my lord. They're accompanying the second string to their game. They should be playing right now. Oh, yeah. 132 to 48. Yeah, and this is the start now in Almine's path of self-loathing. All he wants is people with a never-ending drive and talent to give him a good time. A.K.A. Kagami. I know I said Kisei was my favorite character a couple episodes ago of the GOM, but I love them all so much. They all have such great character development. From Kuroko to Kagami to Aomine, Murasaki Bara. <laughs> That's what made him the habitual analyzer he is today. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> He's like, but I won't pry. You're dealing through your own shit, you know? Good friends, man, I tell you. Great friends. So what is that, a fucking novel? Oh, you're the analytical lord, Momui. We all know this in the future. Just tell me real quick, if this guy is not the if this guy is the coach, who is he? Is he? I assume he's the manager. Momui's not yet, but also, who's his voice actor? I recognize him. Who do who do I know that he voices? The generation of miracles. Damn, that's certainty. 100 battles, 100 victories. Twenty points per game. Twenty I feel so bad for Aumine. You can tell he's just genuinely not feeling it.
Facts. Some good advice. That is exactly what friends do. And is this what leads to Kuroko putting the popsicle down his back? Indirectly to a popsicle down your shirt. Facts. But you are also you are also an exception, Kuroko. Soon enough it will happen. His name will be Kagami, but there's Ogiwara. Two years. Well, I'm glad they kept their promise. I'm glad they're going against each other in nationals. Hmm, I don't think... Because didn't Kuroko say before this flashback started that his friend quit basketball and will never forgive Kuroko? So how does this turn out bad? This was the nail in the coffin for Almine. This is where he let, left him hanging with the, the fist bump. Is me. It feels so much more complete getting the full story for everything, not bits and pieces here and there. Oh, that sucks. They lost the first round. Yeah, that that's unfortunate. Good friend, though. At least calling him, telling him. Oh, Yeah, man, that's rough. That's why the episode's called Sorry. Is this how it's going to end? God damn it. I want more so bad. Fuck. It feels weird getting a backstory so, so very late into the show. But it also feels masterfully and masterfully placed and also perfect. Like, I don't know. It just, I just, I feel like I've already grown to so much and so attached to these characters that to get the full picture now and the full story makes me only like them more and feel more relatable to them. And like, I don't know. Like, I, I feel Almine, I feel Midorima and Morisaki Bara's beef. I feel the Kisei and meeting up with him. Akashi has been intriguing me, also scaring me a lot. Like, we have so much shit going on. I really enjoyed the opening and the ending. Um, hmm, hmm, great character development. And I can't wait for this little arc to be done. And so how much better it's going to feel and how much more development is going to feel like we've had when we cut back to the present and we go against Rakuzan and Akashi. Oh my, it's going to be crazy. Oh. And it feels weird not having Kagami for episodes. Like, it feels weird, but I, I do miss my boy. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell so you guys always know when I post over here on the Dapper channel. Check out that Patreon. Early access. Full lengths. Up to four episodes ahead. Don't forget to drink some water. Tell someone you love them. Have a great day, Dapper Squad. Peace out.